At Peruvian Precious Metals, we have an amazing outreach program to our community, Cainquitas. We have a community of 150 people that live here. And our goal is to provide as many jobs that we can and help out with any kind of needs that they have. Uh, to date, we have put in a school for them. We're, work we're building a library currently. Um, we have an amazing soccer field. And today, we have brought 12 college students to volunteer to help the community. We are working with them to clean up their water system so that they have clean and healthy drinking water. I love that we're with a really diverse group of people and many of which on the trip are kids that are anywhere from 17 to 25, I believe. Hi, my name is Carolyn. My name is Chase Whitney. My name is Ethan. I'm Alex Coran. My name is Stan Arnson. I'm Miles. Hi, my name is Rudy. I'm Tara. My name is Javier Jimenez. I'm Chad. My name is Jarrett Marr. Hi, I'm Cindy. I'm from Seattle, Washington. The focus has been about um, reaching out to the community of Peru, experiencing the culture, but also figuring out a way that we can give back and be involved and work side by side with the community. It's been pretty, pretty amazing to explore uh, Peru, uh, that being surfing and hiking and just uh, walking around different cities. Now that we've done this massive journey out here, it was a six hour drive to get deep into the Andes here. It's just been the biggest difference, seeing from the flea markets of Lima, what they're selling as the real Peru, to what I'm kind of seeing as the real Peru now here deep in the Andes at this beautiful village, seeing these huge mountains everywhere. It's, it's fantastic. We uh, started off by grabbing all of the supplies um, that we bought with uh, money that we fundraised uh, for donations. So that include like blankets, uh, dishes, school supplies, toothbrushes, and we brought that down to the community. And we went to the community center and introduced ourselves to uh, 50 or 60 or so of the community members. Walked up, uh, met all the children, the families. We met with the whole community, and we brought all the gifts that we bought here for them and they gather around all the women and children there and they really appreciated the stuff that we brought for them and it was really cool seeing how happy they were to meet us all. The main high point of the day for me of course was just playing, playing soccer with the villagers. Well, I noticed just one thing about the camaraderie of this community is that all of the guys, you know, they all come together and work, and then after that, they go and play soccer, and the whole village seems to really come together. Bonito, este, enlazar esa amistad con los jóvenes que han venido de otros sitios. Me parece muy bonito como quedar, o sea, una amistad como familiar, ¿no? Acá con la comunidad, más que todo, o sea, nos traen ese cariño, y nosotros también apreciamos ese cariño, enlazar esa diversión de fútbol. Today we are making canals for the water so that there's actually fresh, clean water. So we're clearing it out. We pulled all the weeds out and made, uh, we got rid of the vegetation, put planks down, and then poured the cement. And um, it's a big process. It takes a lot of work, but we have about 20 or 30 volunteers from the village who are helping us work. So we're really busting it out, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's important that this gets done for the people in, in the small villages here so they can have clean water and so they can live their lives and, um, and tend to their plants and their animals. One thing completely different uh, that you notice out here versus where I'm from is um, you can't just walk down the street to the supermarket to pick up your food. You, know, you need to take care of yourself. That means you need to grow your own food, tend to your own animals, and um, take care of yourself out here. I mean, I don't know really what my expectation was for Peru. Lima is a major city, so that kind of made sense. But then you get out here and everybody's in their traditional clothing and wearing their hats and lots of bright colored things. And it's just completely different. And you do get a sense that even though it's not like a 
totally tiny village that it's very isolated and that there's a kind of lifestyle up here that happens that isn't as impacted by the things that we're impacted by. One thing that I've been thinking about is what the boys are going to take away from this. And uh, hearing their conversations, they're like, wow, I, I didn't know that people could have so little and do so much with so little. And then they realize it's like people, you don't have to have a lot to be successful. You know, you don't have to have as much as you think you need.